Right, let's carry on with another soda shot quick tip. And the quick tip I'm going to give you today, you can certainly have a play around with, but it really comes in handy when you're using or you're trying to work up an image in Photoshop that's got some white in it. And it's fundamentally a, a nice, easy way of doing a quick white balance. I've shown you other methods of doing a quick white balance in Photoshop before, but this one's really, really simple. But you do need some white in it. And what we're going to do is use the, a blend mode called divide. Now, I'm not going to go into the uh, whys and wherefores and the science of it. Um, you can look that up on Wikipedia or the Adobe website, but it is something that comes in quite handy. And you can use it in a somewhat creative way as well. So I've got three images here, a um, couple of link shots, and a shot that Steve Kaluski's just sent me, one of my patrons, who's got a new Canon 1DX Mark III. And uh, here we've got a French partridge. Now, the thing is that on all these images, we know we've got white, and we also know that we've got a bit of a colour cast, but it's not something that you can really identify in Lightroom, because Lightroom's colour correction uh, with the colour picker tool is a little bit... Ooh, it's not very accurate. Okay, so... Let's just start off with this image, and I'm going to show you a neat little trick here. I'm just going to get out my colour sampler tool, and we'll just click just there, in that little bit of out-of-focus, semi-bright highlight in the snow. And if we see, it's 213 red, 215 green, 209 blue. So it's deficient in blue, it's got more red in it, and it's got a lot of green in it. Well, it's not a lot, but by comparison to red, it's only two points more green, but of course it's six points more than the blue. So if we want to remove that colour cast, it can be really easy. So I'm now going to switch out to my eyedropper tool, and I'm just going to come in here, and I'm just going to click on that little spot there. Okay. And that's drop that colour in is my foreground colour. So you can do this on your own images. And we'll come down to add a new layer or add a new adjustment layer. And we're going to go for solid colour. And that is now filled a new layer with that solid colour which we just sampled from that out of focus snow. And temporarily I'm just going to click OK. And then we're going to come to the blend mode and we are going to drop it into the divide blend mode, rather like that. Now then, it's gone very harsh, and we've got blown highlights, so we've got we've lost highlight detail. Very, very simple to get rid of. Double click on the adjustment itself, or the color fill, and then come to the brightness slider, and then just lift it up. And as I lift that up, you can see that all the highlight detail comes back. And I'm going to take that virtually all the way to the top and click OK. And then we'll turn that layer off. And we'll turn it on. Turn it back off. You can now see that there was a pre or there is a predominance of green in this white snow. And yet you couldn't really put your finger on the degree of colour cast that was there until you'd actually seen it neutralised out. And if it is neutralised out, because you can see that colour picker reference is now 216, 216, 216. So that's just a cute little trick, I think. Let's move on to the next image over here. Now, I quite like the colour balance of this image, of this Lynx. I do quite like it. But again, I can see that I've got a bit of a colour cast in the foreground. So what we'll do again is, and you don't have to do this with a colour sampler tool, this is just me illustrating a point. So let's come into this near highlight there, and we can see that's 209 red, 204 blue, but 213 green. So it's still got a predominantly subtle green cast over the image. 
As I said before, I quite like the look of this image, but I'm just going to clean up the foreground a little bit. So this is what you would do. Go and pick up your eyedropper tool. I'm just going to come and sample in the middle of there. Just sam so as I'm sampling from the same color area. And then we'll just go and add that same color as a solid color fill layer over the top. We'll click OK. We'll come and put it into the divide blend mode rather like that and you can see now we've lost an awful lot of highlight detail in there in the lynx's face so all we're going to do is come and click on there get the brightness slider and push it up until we reach a point where we've brought those highlights back i'm just going to click ok temporarily and then we'll come into the image at 100 percent have we got all those highlights back Let's just go and double click on the uh, adjustment layer again. And can we bring it down a little bit? Here you can see we're starting to choke off the highlights. So again, what we'll do is we'll lift up until we bring all those highlight areas back. And again, that's gone up to 100%. And it's looking okay, that is. So we'll click OK. And we'll take it back out to a fit to screen view. And then we'll turn our color correction layer off and turn it back on again. Off, on. Now, I like it in the foreground, but I think it's a little bit too heavy. And I don't really like it in the actual subject and I don't like it in the background. So all I'm going to do is come to the color fill layer white mask and I'm just going to invert it rather like that. And then all we're going to do is painting with white. Will it be to pull up our brush tool? And we'll paint white to reveal that blue just in these foreground areas, rather like that. And then I'm probably just going to go and feather that mask like crazy, rather like that. And if we look at the mask now, by holding down the Alt or Option key and clicking on it, you can see I'm going to get the color correction in here, but not in this dark area. So if we just come and click back on there, and we'll just click OK, and there we go. So that's that image done. And I quite like it. It's just cleaned up the foreground, got rid of the color cast, but of course the color cast is still over the links, and it's still over the background, because that green cast on that relatively bluish cool background just sort of neutralizes it and makes it go a little bit more slaty gray so let's move on to the uh, last image the one from steve from his uh, new 1dx mark 3 it's very very difficult and this is why it's difficult in uh, lightroom to ascertain a white area yeah because you might be tempted to come in here and sample a white from here but you've got that much detail even if you go up quite large on the image for magnification it's going to be quite hard to pick out what is what should be white and what shouldn't be so if we scoot along to the bottom of the image we can see we've got some and it does help if you know your subject and um, these feather edges should be fairly, fairly close to white. So what we'll do is we'll go into them and we'll come into the brightest area and we'll go and get our color picker tool. Once again, we'll come in here and we'll sample and you'll notice it's a slightly warmer color of um, near white that's dropped in there. We will then go and add a solid color fill layer and we'll click OK. We'll come and drop that into the divide blend mode and then we'll take it out to a fit to screen view. And there we go. So if I turn it off and I turn it on, you can see there's a definite improvement in the color balance because overall the colors of the beak and around the eye they become a lot more neutral. You're actually seeing a little bit more of the color, but there is too much white in there. So the place it's going to show up most of all 
is in areas of white and near white where we've got quite a, a large amount of high frequency detail so all we're now going to do is just double click on the adjustment there and then maybe do we need to lift this brightness up just a little bit maybe sort of about there i think that'll just about do and we'll click ok so there's our unwhite balanced image there's our white balanced image and if we come out to a fit to screen view off on unbalanced balanced and you can use it in a creative way as we did with a mask on the uh, links just in the foreground in the previous shot we can use it as an adjustment on this image where it's not creating any loss of detail in the highlights but it is just brightening the image up just ever so slightly and yet we haven't made any changes to curves to levels or anything like that so we're not actually playing around with the tonal and luminosity information in the underlying raw file and uh, so there you go just give it a try on one or two of your own images have a play go and find something that's in snow or go and find a shot of a bride in a white in a white dress or whatever just find a few shots of yours that are white and just have a go at doing that little tiny quick tip process that i've just shown you over here in photoshop which is and always has been and always will be the king of image processing no matter what the lightroom fanboys say okay hope you got some information out of that that's useful to you guys and um, i shall see you very soon with another quick tip whether it will be photoshop lightroom or something like raw therapy don't know yet but um, if you like this video and you're not subscribed go and subscribe if you like it and you are subscribed go and give it a thumbs up feel free to share it and uh, i shall see you very soon Toodaloo.